Hi, continuing again. Uh, I believe I, I said uh, it was a Nick, Nicholas or Larry Mitchell. Let me find out here. You sold a bus ticket for November 3rd for 11.15 p.m. All right, it's Nicholas Mitchell. You're an Undersecretary General for Legal Affairs and the Legal Council of United Nations, United Nations Headquarters, First Avenue at 46th Street, New York, New York, 10017. All right, here is, uh, I know there's my address on it, sorry, well, the, there are fakes everywhere, they're all called politicians. Something happens to me, now you know who did it. All right, here is the track letter. Let me just do this much quicker. Secretary General. Okay. All of that was done. Number is 8571749832133. This is a FedEx tracking number and the uh, form ID number 0200. Okay. Eight five seven one seven four nine eight three two one three. All right, here's the receipt. Uh, I had it stapled. I hate this dark room of mine. Okay, here's the receipt that I had stapled for. It was uh, mailed from FedEx Kinko's downtown, and this uh, these letters have faded away. 210 Grand Street, Pittsburgh, PA 15219. BTP Post, employee number 547832. It was a young girl. And we have a transaction 5000764273920. Priority overnight 8517175. 74983213, just like the number of the, you know, tracking number. It says 1.95 pounds. Hope you can see that. One point ninety five pounds. Hundred and sixty pages actually. It was thirty four dollars and thirty seven cents. It says, uh, call 1 800 GO FedEx 1 800 463 3339, November 2nd, 2006. I hope you can read this. Yeah, I'm not Steven Spielberg. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Maybe if I distance it, it wouldn't glare that much. Well, if the bad, bad guys come and kill me, you know why now. Uh, here is that FedEx thing again. Here is that receipt. All right. So, <coughs> I send them this with these letters. Uh, it was called differently. Uh, with these ideas, like, you know, there was no form of charity, but there was, uh, like, that get-together, where can people get together and exchange their ideas and everything, and how can, can it be put to the world that uh, there are new things out there, that there are new ways of, you know, uh, of dealing with everyday life, of, of new ways of politics, new ways of freedom, not, you know, all of that. Right now, it's all among politicians, and they release uh, their goodwill anytime they feel like it, anytime it's in their interest. We live uh, the lives that they uh, fashion for us. And we can, you know, put the stop to it. So we have a Bosnian law, Bosnian form of charity. Bosnian get-together would be finding that place, finding outlets for media, for regular people to say something. I've even found on the internet people making their inventions uh, anonymously, you know, and just giving it to the world because there is no outlet for that. 
There is no way we can help each other. We, we are cut off from, in spite of all the technology we've got, we're cut off from each other. This is a crime of, of both media and the government. Uh, they simply deprived us from uh, talking to each other in the right way. All you will hear, they will let, let you hear is that maniac, you know, somebody stupid says something or whatever, to uh, deprive you of desire, to make you distrust one another. That's all, that it's a psychological game. Just like this uh, psychological warfare that's been going on on Bosnian Catholic, Bosnian Orthodox, uh, to call themselves Serbians and Croatians for since 1878, and finally kicked in during the war. So it's now a psychological warfare put, you know, in so that we look up to either uh, Serbia or Croatia by being converted into either Christian Orthodox or Catholic, or to Turkey uh, by, you know, or to Macedonia, whoever, anyone but your own country. That's the same thing. Psychological warfare is going on. And uh, my country is just like uh, their, their little experiment. So that's what's going on. Now we have those Bosnian Forum Charity, Bosnian World, Bosnian Get Together. Let's go through Bosnian economy. This is like a, what I originally called people's economy. Let's say you open up a pizza shop, all right, and the bad day is like $400 you made today. You pay $50 a day at the most on electricity, gas, whatever you're using. About $50 on... Uh, supplies. That's a good day actually if you spend 50,000 supplies. But, you'll make more than 400, way more. But, uh, let's say you, you pay people $150. So that's altogether $250 out of 400 that you have made. So you pay people, you, you put the money away for the bill, you have $150 left. What do you do with it? You use the money you have made and buy the supplies for the food that you cook for free because, and give it to the people actually. Give it to the poor who live in the poor neighborhood. You give the delivery drivers to just take into that neighborhood. And uh, since you already paid for it, uh, for the bill and everything, since you're already done with it and you paid your people immediately and you know you're covered, government gets its money through the tax and through the bills. So everything is covered. So basically, you're working to feed people and everyone's covered. Government, the taxes, the pay, and simply uh, it's done because nobody owns the shop. People just work in it and it's built by money uh, of charity, like uh, from charity or whatever. So that's, uh, that's one thing. And, uh, the people will be boss. That's why I called it originally people's economy. But let's call it Bosnian economy because if everybody can be nationally proud, so can I. Um, this kind of thing would be very helpful to us. So from this t-shirt selling thing, we could build like 10, 15 pieces. Now they're expensive. They're like $150,000, like a, you know, one with everything you need and so forth, a little restaurant or whatever. And uh, we could use the extra income like after expenses of the store and people being paid every day extra income always to every day feed people in the bad neighborhoods lunch and dinner time and that's about it it will help a lot so today you have learned of four new things form of charity bosnian get together bosnian vote for the democratic countries and government to say they obey by people. So let's vote this Christmas for the world's peace. Simple as that. Let's see what they do. It is nothing violent about it. And if they don't do it, let's not get violent. And we will at least all know where our government stands and how much they really respect our wishes. And fourth, Bosnian economy. Uh, stores not owned by anybody, but all of the actual profit going into the food for people. All right? It doesn't have to be food. You can put money aside for education of the children. Whatever, you know, whatever works. And it doesn't have to be pizza shop. could be anything. Whatever you think of, whatever it's going to do. And these kind of businesses would not compete. Let me, I'll finish that.